Welcome to Gray Overload. I'm Anthony and we have Intel CEO resigning. So Intel is making moves here. Um, Brian Krasnick, the CEO is, and I hope I pronounced his name right, and he's a member of the board of directors, has resigned from both those positions. And the chief financial officer, Robert Swan, is going to be the interim um, CEO until they find their next CEO. Who knows it's going to be? It may be uh, Robert Swan. We don't know yet. They're going to start conducting that search. They probably even started reaching out to people today. But the reason why uh, Mr. Krasnick was, um, re or why he resigned, was that of a past consensual uh, relationship with an Intel employee. So there's a no fraternizing policy at Intel for all managers. And given that expectation, that basically Intel said, yeah, you gotta, you, you, I'm guessing Intel said this, you gotta either resign or you're gonna be fired, right? Now, <clears throat> I think that there might be something else going on here too. Intel has had some struggles, especially with 10 nanometer and everything else. However, underneath uh, Brian as CEO, they have made a ton of money, and he did uh, did uh, he was in trying to move Intel into a data centric type company, and the Intel even revised their uh, expectations for their second quarter uh, revenue to be approximately sixteen point nine billion, and so that's supposed to be an increase of what it was. So that there there's better guidance on the market side of things there as well. But um, the board of the directors, I, there was a quote from, I, I think, the Intel's chairman. He, he said that they believe in the stra in strongly in Intel strategy and they're confident that uh, Mr. Swan's ability to lead the company and conduct, um, to move it forward in that direction, and they're confident of that. And they're going to continue to search for that. I'm sure... Um, Bob was probably, uh, as they call him here, in a little bit of Intel blog post, is going to get a consideration as well. And, you know, who knows, if it takes a long time, he may have a better opportunity depending upon how he leads Intel as well. I think that it's going to be interesting here. I think there's other things at play. I think that they found about this relationship, who knows, but it was a convenient time maybe for the board wanting to move in a different direction and they're able to, and it just kind of lined up that way. That's some of the, the thoughts I'm thinking of this based upon timing of everything and how the blog post is kind of written. It makes it seem like there's something else there that they wanted to accomplish at the same time, uh, especially when you're talking about finances right after this as well. So. I think that there's, you know, with the past CEO, they made a lot of money, but now they're having increased pressure with AMD, uh, Qualcomm, as well as NVIDIA. I think NVIDIA is a threat to them as well, and probably some of the whole thinking is between those partners uh, on the outside that are putting pressure on Intel to even perform or move. They've had trouble with 10 nanometers. You know, that could be a fault of uh, this decision and not having in some other designs in the 14 nanometer process and trying to make sure that the 10 nanometer was getting done. Who really knows? I'm sure some of this is going to start coming out more and more now that this uh, res resignation happened, but only time will tell. Um, nothing, I don't think anything's going to really change for Intel in the short term. I, you know... Robert Swan as interim CEO, he may change a couple things, may move a direction or two. I think that mostly the Intel board is going to be wanting them to kind of follow their direction until they find the new CEO. And the new CEO is probably going to match their direction and what they envision as well. So that's kind of some of my thoughts that are going on here on the Intel side is basically nothing's going to change until they get the new CEO. And I mean, that means processors, designs, because those all take time. Once you make a change, it takes a while for that design to get, you know, through, validated, everything else. And uh, we'll have to wait and see to see if there's any positive stuff coming out of it. Intel has a lot of its play. It's got FPGAs, it's got, you know, uh, the Mobi, the automated driving stuff, that's got. Uh, the, their server side stuff it's got manufacturing it's got desktop it's got mobile uh, so it's got a huge realm of stuff 
uh, graphics cards are coming here soon. So they're they're trying to fight on all fronts, and there's Qualcomm, Nvidia, AMD, all there. I mean, heck, they're even working with AMD on a processor as well with the graphics and from AMD and then their Intel CPU. Really interesting stuff overall, but there's a lot of moving parts here at Intel and this is just another one trying to iron things out as the competition heats up and makes it quite fun. So it's gonna be, it's really interesting for me. I'm, I'm enjoying this with the everything, but the CD, CEO thing is that I felt like the board, you know, from my perspective, I felt like the board would just want to move in a different direction to help them in this new era of you know competition that's actually really fun for especially for me as a consumer so um let me know what your thoughts are on this whole intel new uh, ceo resignation and what your your thoughts are on this as well um and i do want to thank you for watching gray overload and helping support this channel grow i really appreciate it it's been great to see this channel grow and i contribute to all of you guys helping out helping this channel and until next time, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching Gray Overload. If you like this content, be sure to subscribe.